In order to manage group managed service accounts, I first need to ensure that my domain has a configured KDS root key. So I'm on my domain controller, logged in as an enterprise admin, and I'll start by running get KDS root key. In this lab, we already have a KDS root key configured. However, this isn't the default, so you may need to run add KDS root key. By default, this would have you waiting 10 hours before it becomes effective, but you can change the effective time to 10 hours in the past in order to get around this. However, for production, you'd want to use effective immediately. To test that the root key is working, we can run test KDS root key. And if it returns true, you're good to go. Next, we need to create our group managed service account. And we'll start by having a look at the service accounts already configured in this domain. There's already one service account listed, but we'll go ahead and specify the client that we want our new service account to be associated with, which is client prod. And then we'll quickly check to see whether or not that existing service account has been associated with our client. This command returning nothing indicates that there isn't currently a GMSA associated with that host. So let's go ahead and create our own host. We'll start by naming it. In this case, it's a line of business service. And then we'll set up the parameters for our service account. In this case, we'll pass in the name we just specified, give it a DNS host name, specify which hosts, in this case client prod, are allowed to retrieve its managed password, and then indicate that it should be enabled. You can also provide a service principal name and other attributes, and you can look at the comments in the supplied script to find out more about that. And then we can provide those parameters to new AD service account. So if we run get AD service account again, we should see two service accounts, the existing one and the line of business service that we just created. So finally, we need to associate this new group managed service account with our target client. We do that by running add AD computer service account, specifying both the host and the service account. We can test that this has worked by rerunning the get ad computer service account commandlet. And this time we have output indicating that the service account has been successfully associated with our host. So in order to start using the service account, I'll head over to my client. I'm now over on my client PC and I'm running PowerShell as an administrator. We'll need that later on when we start using our group managed service account to run a service. But first, let's check that we installed our service account correctly from our domain controller. And we'll do that by running test AD service account and providing the name of our service account. When that command that outputs true, that means our service account has been installed correctly. If we hadn't already installed our service account via our domain controller, you can install it from your client using install AD service account. Now let's actually use our group managed service account to do something interesting. Let's create a dummy service, which we'll call test service, and we'll point this at an exe file in our system32 directory. Now we'll change it so that the start name, or the account under which our service is running, over to our line of business service group managed service account. Notice that the service account has been specified here with a dollar sign at the end. That tells Windows that this is a managed service account and that it shouldn't expect a password. So now we can query Win32 service and check that our service name has the correct start name against it. And as you can see in that output, our line of business service service account is registered against that service. Finally, let's quickly look at how we can remove a group managed service account. Our first example here removes the association between our service account and our client. You can run this command if you want to reuse your managed service account on another endpoint. If I run that now, I'll be asked to confirm the operation and the service account has been disassociated with our computer. And finally, we'll remove our AD service account from Active Directory. Again, we need to confirm the action and that's been managing group managed service accounts with PowerShell. Thanks for watching.